Hi there and welcome to this two minute tips video and today we're going to look at AF area mode functionality and it's the second part of two videos and this one is really focused on the AF area modes that are most um, useful for moving subjects. So in part one of these two videos on AF area mode we looked at the AF area modes which are most appropriate to static type images, that's pinpoint, single point and dynamic area. In this video we're going to look at wide area mode, both small and large, and then auto area. Again, as with the other modes, you can access them by programming them into your I button on the back of the camera, or you can press the function 2 button and turn the front wheel to move between the different modes. Whilst I've said that these modes, the wide area and auto area modes, are most appropriate for moving subjects, they can of course be used for static subjects as well if you want, but they are more useful for, mo for um, subjects which are perhaps moving a little bit. So let's start with wide area mode, and here you've got a small option or a large option. The small option shows you a square of um, autofocus points. It's larger than pinpoint and single point, but it's smaller than the large wide area mode, which is rectangular, with the vertical axis of the rectangle being about one and a half times its size, and the horizontal axis being about two and a half times its size. Because both of them are larger than single point, they're easier to keep your subject within that focus box or area, especially when it's moving. As with the uh, modes we talked about in the previous video. It can be used with either AFS mode, the single autofocus mode, where if you um, press the AF on button or the shutter release halfway down, if the camera catches focus, the box will turn green. If it doesn't, then it will flash red. Um, and it can be used also with AFC mode, continuous autofocus, and in that mode you don't see any change in the colour or nature of the focus area box. It just remains red whether it captures focus or not. How this works is fairly simple. You've got to, as with other modes, position the box over the subject, whether it's static or moving. And if there are multiple um, subjects within that area, it will tend to pick up on the nearest subject, so you've got to take that into consideration. However, the, the focus areas are relatively small, so therefore it's quite good at being able to be quite precise with your focus area, whilst having a bit of latitude if the subject's moving, as I say. And it's probably one of the AF area modes that I use most. I tend to use the smaller one unless the subject is moving quite considerably. I tend to use that small wide area mode for both static and moving subjects if I can, because it gives me a balance of precision with a little bit of latitude for, that, for potentially moving subjects. So auto area mode really takes the whole sensor and allows the camera to try and predict the subject within that area. It's this mode that you can use with face detection and eye detection or have those turned off. And if you want to control that, you go into the custom settings menu, option A4, and there you get the option to turn off face detection and eye detection. I'll cover face detection and eye detection in a separate video because I think it's got enough functionality that we can cover in a, a two minute video. So this video we're going to we're going to look at auto area but without face detect and eye detect. So as I say auto area mode is the most automated of all of the um, options. It looks at the whole sensor and the camera tries to predict what is the subject in that area. It will normally be the closest um, sub potential subject to the um, camera. However, not always. From my experimentation, it will normally go for the closest potential subject. However, it seems to look at where that subject is on the sensor and give some weighting to something that's closer to the center. It will perhaps consider if you've pressed the AF on button or depressed the shutter release halfway down and locked onto a subject and then released it and gone back again. It will sometimes capture on the same subject it had before. Um, so what I find is this really isn't the mode to use when you've got 
perhaps quite a complex um, image you're trying to take with multiple potential subjects at different distances layered away from the camera and it is more complex for the camera to distill down what is actually the subject. In these situations sometimes it's better to use the wide area mode either the small or perhaps the large depending on the nature of the um, subject you're trying to capture. What the camera does to help you understand what it's picked as a subject is that when it captures um, focus it will show you a series of small boxes on the screen or the LCD to show what it's captured as the, as the focus area. If you don't like what it's captured, you don't think that's, that's not the subject you want, you can release um, and then recapture again. However, sometimes it will just keep going back to the same subject and you have to move the camera a little bit to try and um, get the camera to, to capture a different focal point. Using any of these modes, it's really important to think about how we're using the, the different elements of the autofocus functionality and the shutter release functionality to get the right effect. I tend not to use these um, modes with a very shallow depth of field. I tend to use it with a slightly wider depth of field. So if the camera captures slightly the wrong subject, actually the subject you want may still be in focus because you've got that slightly deeper depth of field. Equally, I tend to only use this mode if I'm capturing something that's moving with AFC and with perhaps a low or a high burst rate of shutter release as well. Because combining these you get the best chance of actually getting the shot that you want if the subject's moving and it's quite a complex um, situation for the camera to predict. As I say, we'll cover face detect and eye detect in a separate video. We'll also cover subject tracking in a separate video, which is another piece of functionality that works with auto area mode. So I hope you found this video useful. I've tried to keep it relatively short by focusing on just the wide area modes and the auto area mode. It is important, as I say, to think about all of these different elements to the autofocus functionality holistically and really step back. Increasingly, as you've got moving subjects you're trying to capture, to really think about where is that subject going to be? How is it going to be moving? How do I get the right focus mode, the right autofocus area mode? How do I get the right shutter release mode? To give myself and the camera the best chance of capturing the image we want. I hope you found this useful. If you did, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell beneath to be notified of future videos in this series. Let me know in the comments below how you're getting on with autofocus. Are you getting some great results even with moving subjects which are by nature more complex?